Hey guys and girls, Shady Mate UK here again. Uh, this is going to be uh, a little, uh, a little sequence that I'm going to go through. A little bit of uh, safety tips with the karambit. Got the uh, my fake fox training karambit out here. Uh, this is going to be for um, Red Chief Double Zero, if I remember his name correctly. Uh, he was uh, talking about how you avoid cutting yourself uh, when flipping the blade like so uh, and also when you're throwing the blade out how to make sure you don't you know, come in and cut yourself or catch yourself uh, when performing any kind of uh, extended range shots and just when basically flipping the karambit. Uh, a couple of things that I do to make sure that I don't kind of uh, hit myself, especially in the arm, is when I'm flipping the blade, my arm's quite straight, my hand's kind of in line with my arm, so when the blade comes round, it's basically in line parallel with my forearm. If you have your wrist at a slight angle like this, you will kind of over it here, but as you spin, you can see I've kind of come right over the other side. So you want to keep your your hand nice and straight. Thrust if you're pulling back for any kind of moves where you spin. To try and keep that uh, your hand and your wrist alignment kind of in line with the rest of your arm. Let's see if I can kind of pan down just a little bit. So I'm coming in like this. See how my wrist kind of stays in line. I'm not tweaking it. I'm not pulling it out that way. Uh, if you do tweak, it's, a, it's a, a good technique for if someone's kind of grabbed your arm here. Uh, if you take this as someone else's hand. If I do bring my wrist in, I can throw over, and you can see how I've kind of grabbed, uh, kind of punctured the opponent's hand, and I can pull down like that and kind of draw cut all across the hand. So that's the only kind of time really I will tweak my wrist in is if I'm trying to target someone who's actually holding my arm. Like so. Ouch. So yeah, nice and straight. Keep that wrist alignment. A lot of people will have a karambit up here as well. And it may it may feel a little odd. Uh, for me, I tend to have it past the first knuckle, about there, and then I have a lot more control over the angles I'm pointing at, rather than having it real tight up against, you know, right up in the, the web between the two fingers. From there, for me at least, it just, it, it feels, it's very secure, it's locked in there, but uh, it's not it's not very good for for, for spinning the blade, um, just because you don't have that extra space in the hand. You know you're right in there like that. If you bring it from here, you can push almost like a kind of you know you get the old martial arts movies or your old uh, karate instructor would you know punch like this, which is a really bad technique by the way. But you can do that with the using the ring of the karambit as a striking implement itself. Bang. So yeah, that's just my preference. I mean, I don't know if there is a right or wrong way to do it, but for me, I just I feel uncomfortable if I have the ring up in between, you know, my main knuckle and the and the first knuckle of my finger. So that might uh, might help you guys out if you're having a bit of trouble, especially if you're worried about cutting yourself. It kind of also kind of shift the blade across just a bit so that when it does come around you've got you know a fair bit of clearance there but I mean just practice as well practice just spinning the blade around throwing forwards and uh, yeah it should feel kind of natural after a while. It does for me, but I've been doing it for a while. 
Uh, the other aspect that we wanted to talk about safety wise is when throwing for extended range, you know, if I want to reach past there, um, you know, say that's been my, my full extent of my arm, if I'm trying to hit way over there, I don't spin the blade close to myself. I'm not here and spinning it with the chance of, you know, cutting here or bring it up to my face and spinning so I can catch. I always make sure that my arm's kind of leaving my body, leaving my center line, and then I throw. There's no chance then of me coming in, cutting myself. You'll also find it very hard to throw the blade forwards and somehow catch a forearm unless your wrist is, you know, like we said before, unless your wrist is kind of tweaked in, because then you can kind of see the angle of the blade here is kind of facing in towards my forearm. So if I try and throw from there, I'm actually cutting the inside of my arm. If I can do it fast, it's quite awkward to show. But you can see I can feel that kind of just scraping my forearm as it comes across. So it's all about maintaining good control over your wrist alignment. Again, it's kind of uh, got the finger ring kind of just down past my middle knuckle. And as I spin the blade for extended range, I don't start spinning before I move my, my arm. I don't throw from here and then extend. I extend and throw at the same time. Uh, it's always good to have a training blade. Um, or if you've got a karam bit and it's sharp, then tape it up. Tape it up quite a lot because um, you know the nature of hawk bill blades are designed to kind of grab and cut. And uh, if you've got a couple of layers of tape and you've got a good sharp blade, there's a good chance you'll just cut straight through the tape once you actually meet pressure against the edge. So yeah, do be careful. Do use your training blade when you're going through techniques. And then even if you are clipping yourself a little bit just due to poor technique, uh, you, you'll, you'll still feel it, but there's not a chance you're gonna do any long, you know, long lasting damage by cutting any of the tendons or anything on the inside of the arm. So yeah, make sure that the blade is moving away from your body as you throw. That will eliminate any chances of uh, cutting yourself. And when spinning backwards towards yourself, like so, just keep that wrist alignment nice and straight. Maybe do it in front of a mirror. Just, just get used to that motion. It's not a big hooping motion like that. You know, you can kind of keep your arm straight and just use that little up and down movement with the wrist. And uh, yeah, just have a play with it. Mainly, basically, use a trainer, be safe, and uh, as Gavco says so wisely, don't cut yourself. Anyway, take care, guys.